Hallelujah. Praise God. My name is Florence Lalang. I'm born again. I welcome you to Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry. This is a ministry that touch lives. This is a ministry that you tune in and you are encouraged and you are, uh, you are built spiritually. I welcome you. From wherever you are listening, welcome. Take your time. Be seated and receive from the Lord. Before we start, I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we love you this moment, God, that we are seated wherever we are in this world. We welcome your presence that as we share our word today, my God, as we receive from you, minister to us, O oh God. Speak to us, Jehovah Lord. We are your children. Lord Jehovah Lord, we are thirsty for you. Have your way in us, O oh God, for we love you, we believe in you, and we trust in you. Jehovah, I pray for the listener today, my God, that you may open their eyes and ears that they may receive from you, God. We surrender all unto you, for it is in Jesus' name I pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. I welcome you. Before we read our topic today, is time of your visitation has come. And before we go to our scripture, which is Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 23, I want us to read, read a word from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8, and then we read Revelation 3, 20 again. Revelation 1, 8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Praise the Lord, listener. I'm using New King James Version. I want to encourage you that even as you read the word, God is still God. Yes, he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So be encouraged, my sister. God has not changed. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is still God that he will listen to you, that he is with you and is blessing you and increasing in you. And he will visit you because he has not changed. Hallelujah. I want us again to read um, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. And the word of the Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. The Bible is encouraging us today that yes, the Lord is standing at the door of your heart. He's knocking. And if you hear his voice, open the door and he will come in and dine with you. And your life will never be the same again. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know the, your situation. As you listen to me this moment, the Bible is encouraging you. Open your heart. Let Jesus come and reign in you. Let Jesus dwell in you. For the Bible tells us in Corinthians that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Let Jesus live in you and reign in you. And I believe, my listener, your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Amen. And so let us go to our Bible verse, which is Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. And as I said, our theme of today's message is the time of your visitation has come. Hallelujah. So let us read. The Bible says, I want us to start from verse 18. It says, Now the path of Jesus Christ was follows. After his mother Mary was bethought to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while the he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord. Through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. 24 say, Then Joseph, being arose from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife, and did not know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. And I may ask, visitation, what is visitation? To me, it is a ministry that I have loved. In my church, Nyali Baptist Church, I've served in that ministry for over four years. And I've really enjoyed ministering to people. Those who are sick in hospital, we visited. Those who are at homes, we visited. When one is blessed with a baby, we visit and we take them goodies to receive and rejoice with the family. And even when one is down spiritually, we visit and pray with them. I don't know how you feel when a visitor is coming to your house. I know most of the time you are God preparing from cleanliness of the house, from buying, doing shopping to ensure that the visitor will get something to eat. And that is good. But this moment, I want us to hear what is visitation according to, as a Christian, what do you understand? As a believer, what happens when you are visited? The way Joseph was visited by an angel. Are you ready to be visited by the angel? You, you know, it is important that uh, visitation occurs even when there is need like this. Joseph was in a deep thought about sending Mary away. Other versions says he wanted to divorce her. He wanted to not to marry her because she was already pregnant. And uh, you can agree with me, my listener, that even any man may not accept to marry a lady who is already pregnant by another man. Because he will even wonder what name will she give to the baby or what, what, how are they going to relate. And here is Joseph, as just as he was a man, he thought deep what will happen. And so in that time of thinking, I see he went to a sleep. We don't know whether it was in a vision or he went to bed and sleep. And that is when the angel of the Lord visited him and gave him the message. And um, as for you, believer, I want you to understand, as for me and you, let us understand what happened. What is, what is this day of visitation? I have three points that I want to help you clearly understand the meaning of visitation. Number one, the day of visitation is the day when God draws near to bring wisdom and knowledge needed to get the blessing. Praise the Lord. This is the day when God draws near to bring wisdom and knowledge needed to get the blessing. Just as the case of Joseph. He gave him, he was in a thought, in deep thought. And God came, visited him and gave him wisdom and knowledge. Because initially in verse 19, you are told he was in deep thought. He wanted to divorce, which would be a foolish thought. But now he was visited and he was given wisdom and knowledge on why he should take Mary to become his wife. Another point that I want us to understand about visitation is that this is the day when God draws near to deliver the blessing. The day of visitation is the day when God draws near to deliver the blessing. The birth of Jesus is a blessing to the entire world. During the time of Joseph and Mary when they were carrying the baby, up to this day that we are in, just as we've read in Revelation, is Alpha and Omega. So this is the blessing that we have today. Another point that I want us to note is that the day of visitation is the day when he brings what which we have been believing for. I don't know what you've been believing God for. When you are visited, you receive your blessing. You receive that thing that you are believing God for. Be it healing, that is the day you receive your healing. For Joseph had to receive the baby, being in the womb of the mother Mary, that yes, we will walk in this journey together to terms. Hallelujah. Some of this visitation can come quietly strong. It can be recognized. Most of them come quietly and we have to be the spirit to recognize them. Praise the Lord. Just as it happened to Joseph. Being a man like any other man had had said, he had his own decision. He had his own thoughts. But what happened when he fell asleep, he was visited. And get me correctly, my listener. Sometimes God visits us, come to us when he sent one of his humble servants to bring simple words of encouragement. And so, like when you are in hospital or you are just at home, we are very low, God sent his angels, God sent his servants to come and stand with you and encourage you. 
And when you are uh, encouraged, I believe your life will never be the same again, just as it happened for Joseph and Mary. They were united. They walked the journey together. As we can see from the beginning of Matthew to the end, we read the life, the story of Jesus, of how it happened, how these dear parents protected even baby Jesus when Herod tries to kill the children. And um, there are some ways to get ready for visitation. And I want us not to miss the point. Clearly, what do you do so that you don't miss visitation? And as I say, when you know you will have visitors, there are so many things that you do as a human being. And for as a Christian, as a believer, for you not to miss visitation, number one, you need to position yourself. Position yourself, my sister, my brother. So that visitation may not, you may not miss the, your hour of visitation. I imagine what could have happened on Joseph if he was not, uh, if he didn't position himself. To be visited by the angel and uh, I try to imagine I don't know what could have happened so position yourself don't be busy bodies that like that you don't have time even to receive to welcome the spirit to come and reign in you you don't have the opportunity to tune yourself to the ways of the Lord to position yourself to receive this uh, visitation you don't read the Bible you don't uh, minister, you are not ready to be ministered to by brethren. Don't desert yourself. Don't uh, avoid um, being with people. Position yourself in the way the best that God can help you. And point number two, understand God's timing. Way how you can get ready for visitation, as I've said, understand God's timing. You know God's timing is the best. That's what we normally say a lot. But understand God's timing. God's timings come uh, in a good best way. Like when Mary was pregnant, he was to carry the pregnancy for nine months. And mothers can agree with me. We carry our babies for nine months. And there, after nine months, due time comes. So understand when is your due time. Don't miss out on your time. Understand God's timing. The time that he wants to visit you. Another point, pray in the season of your visitation. Pray at your home, pray in the city, pray when you are out of the city, as you get ready to receive your breakthrough, to receive that visitation. I'm reminded of um, in the book of Acts, what happened to Paul and Silas. They prayed, they were in praise and worship as they were praying in the prison. And they were visited. And you know what happened? We give glory to God that their lives were changed. Another point that you how to get ready for visitation, obey the Lord. I don't know how your ways are. You read the word, you don't obey it. This moment I want to tell you, you will miss your time of visitation. Obey the Lord. Joseph obeyed. When we read in verse 24, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took with him his wife. Unlike what he had thought in verse 19. And so my brother, my sister, if God asks you to do something specific, obey. For the act of obedience can bring a powerful breakthrough. If you have been called to serve, serve the Lord without complaining. For through obedience, that is when you receive your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Point number four on the ways to get ready for your visitation Ignore messages that speaks the contrary of what you are really trusting God for. We know the world is evil. We have good and bad friends. There are those who may want to put you down completely. But this moment I want to encourage you. No, for you not to miss your visitation. Ignore messages from such people. Any message that speaks contrary to what you are trusting God for. Ignore it completely. We read what happened, Joseph in verse 19, she thought, he thought of divorcing Mary. But when he entered into sleep, when God visited him, he had to ignore that thought. And he accepted and focused on what the Spirit had told, her, told him to do. Another thing, get ready to ride a big wave and practice now. Yes, 
I can imagine how Mary prepared to carry the pregnancy. This was a pure virgin lady. He has never, even I imagine, he has never imagined being pregnant without seeing a man. He's, I don't know how he started collecting uh, free dresses, how he looked for flat shoes, the way ladies will like doing that, that during preg my pregnancy, I don't want to hurt my back, I want to put on flat shoes. That was Mary. She got ready. And even Joseph, maybe they started saving and preparing. What will baby wear when, he, when we give back to him? Prepare to ride on the big waves and practice now on what you are praying that you will be you will receive when you are visited those are the ways to get ready for visitation and even as you prepare to get ready for visitation i want to tell you that at times there are things that may hinder you not even at times always there are things that hinder you from receiving your visitation i don't know whether you've ever wondered at times you don't get visitors. You are not visited. Leave alone this time of Corona that we were told not to visit any howly. But there are some times that even you, you try waiting for maybe your old friend to visit you. No one is coming. Why? I can't imagine. But there are some things. Maybe there are some things they've seen in you that they didn't like. Maybe your ways are not the way that they expected to see you. Maybe your behavior, your character. But according to what the word of God, if you are a sinner, you will miss visitation. It will hinder you from being visited. And so let's, don't be a sinner. Shun away from sinning. Let's read Colossians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. And hear what the Bible tells us about sin. Colossians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21, I will read with the new uh, King James Version, it say, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, and cleanliness, dewness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts, of wrath, selfish ambition, decisions, uresses, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, my listener. Sin will hinder you from receiving your visitation. Sin is a hindrance to your divine visitation. Remember, Mary was a pure lady. Mary was a virgin. And that's why he didn't miss his blessing to be called the mother of the son who came to redeem us, to become the mother of our redeemer, our redeemer. So my listener, don't sin. Let's remain pure. Another hindrance to our divine visitation in depth to God. The Bible encourages us in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, we continue. After sin, we see the fruits of the spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, it's like there is no law. I want to encourage you that as a believer, you need to bear fruit. Are your fruit being seen? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? Do you have kindness? Ah, this is something that I may want to, I may not ask you to answer me, but think about yourself, see yourself, examine yourself. Jay, do you have a debt to God? He has blessed you with spiritual gifts, but you are not exercising any. You are the best singer, but you don't want to participate in church in praise and worship. You are the best usher, but you don't want to serve in the ministry you've been called. You are a teacher in the word. You are a prophet, but you are just there sitting on your gift. God is not happy with you, and thus that is an entrance to your divine visitation. You need to bear fruit. You need to use that talent that God has given you, that gift that God has given you, for you not to miss your visitation. Another point that hinder us or hinder believers from receiving their divine visitation is disobedience to God. Hallelujah. Disobedient. If you disobey the word of the Lord, you will miss your visitation. 
Remember Jonah. When he was sent to the never, he disobeyed and he ended up being swallowed by that big whale. Are you waiting to be swallowed by a whale for you to tune yourself to walk right with God? It will not be good, my sister. Let's read Isaiah 1 verse 19. The book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah 119. He gave a very important point that he says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Do you want to eat the good of the land? Do you want to receive God's blessing? Do you want to be visited? Obey, as the Bible says. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So, my listener, I encourage you to obey. If you disobey, you will hinder yourself from being visited. Another hindrance to receiving a divine visitation is spiritual death. Are you spiritually alive or are you spiritually dead? So this moment, I want to challenge you, my sister. Walk up from your slumber. No more sleeping. Pray and watch for you to be visited. Pray and watch so that you don't miss your blessing. First Thessalonians encourages us. We can read First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 16 to 18. The book of 1 Thessalonians. Hallelujah. The Bible encourages us that. I'm opening 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. The Bible says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Hallelujah. Rejoice always. I don't know how you are. Even when you face trials, when you face tribulation, when things are not going as you expected, the Bible encourages us. Be alive and rejoice. Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ for you. Be alive spiritually. Do not be spiritually dead. Your spiritual life is unexpected not to be a lukewarm life. May prayer and fasting your lifestyle to attract the favor of God in your life. Hallelujah. When you set aside time for prayer, pray my sister, pray my brother. When it is time to read the word of God, read. But they ensure that you have time. To receive the word from the Lord, be it in the morning, be it during the day, be it at night, be a reader. Don't be a believer who only opens the Bible on Sunday. From Sunday to Sunday, that is the time that you only interact with the word of God. I want to challenge you today, be a Bible reader. Get the scripture, walk in the scripture, sleep with the word. For in the Bible, one thing I thank God for the Bible, there is a word for everything, every season. For even when you are cooking, my mother is a word for you. Every, this word of God is a life. Amen. So encourage, I encourage you to be a reader of the word and be the doer. Read and do on what the Bible has said. And in that, you will not miss your visitation. Hallelujah. And I thank God because when you receive your visitation, the results are evident. So what are the results of visitation? When you have prepared yourself, you will not miss your visitation. When you are spiritually alive, alert, when you are obedient to God, when you don't sin, the results of your visitation will be seen. Praise the Lord. And the first one, evident that we can see first even when Joseph accepted to take Mary as the wife. They raised the pregnancy together and baby Jesus was born. And I like the Bible had told Joseph, you will name the baby Jesus. So Mary was the one to carry the pregnancy. But Joseph was to name the son Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the Lord. So results of visitation are there. The Redeemer was born. And that's why me and you, we are redeemed. Hallelujah, my listener. And so when you we are ready for your visitation, the results will be seen. And the first result is that there will be supernatural manifestation. Hallelujah. When God steps into any difficult situation that you may be going through, 
when God step in, the impossible things become possible. Miracles, signs, and wonders are seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will not be hidden. If you are sick and you have visited, you will jump and run because it is the doing of the Lord. There will be restoration. Amen. You, anything the enemy had taken from you, be it finances, it will be multiplied. It will be restored back. As we can remember the story of Job. When everything else was done, was dealt with by the enemy, God came in Job 42. He was restored back. His health was restored. He was blessed like three times of everything he lost. Even children, he got sons and daughters once again. And all of them were, killed, were initially killed by the enemy. So when you, 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 you have visited, when you receive, when it is your visitation and you receive it, your restoration, you will be restored back. Another point, you will receive salvation. It is a result of your visitation. You will receive your salvation. This story, I like the story of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19 verse 1. This young man, short man, who heard that Jesus was in town and he really wanted to see him. And so when it was time to, for him to, to see Jesus, he really purposed to see Jesus. He really prepared, ran, climbed the tree and asked people to move for him to ensure because he was short. He wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus, believe me, he received salvation. Jesus told him, come down from the tree. And he came down and he was saved. That even Jesus went to his house, he visited him in his house physically. He dined with him. And even the sinners, the people was wondering, why is Jesus walking with a sinner who was a tax collector? You can imagine the tax collectors at that time, they were told they were known to be corrupt. I don't know our country of today. I don't know our police of today. But at that time, they were saying they were corrupt. And that's why Zacchaeus, because he was visited by Jesus, he received salvation. Another result of visitation, there is fruitfulness. Hallelujah. The fruits of the Spirit will be evident in you. There will be joy. There will be peace. There will be kindness. There will be kindness. My sister, my brother, receive that visitation and you will bear fruits. You will be showing love. And God will really, uh, God will be seen in you. Hallelujah. Another fruit of, um, another result of visitation is that you will receive your healing. Maybe you're there and you're sick. I want to encourage you that your healing is coming. Hallelujah. We've seen Jesus in the New Testament healing the sick. Even Simon's mother who had the fever, he was healed. And he received healing. And that was a result of visitation. There was that sick man, that child boy who was possessed by the devil, by the spirits. He was set free. And the evidence, he was healed. Glory be to God. Another result of visitation, there will be manifestation of the glory of God in your life. Glory be to God. There will be victory, victory in Jesus, as it is written in, uh, in Corinthians, that we are more than conquerors because Christ is in us. And so my listener, when you are visited, you will conquer what the enemy thought of putting you down on you will stand and declare victory because God will have fight your battle, will have fought your battle. Hallelujah. When you receive visitation, miracles will happen. When you have visited my sister, miracles will be seen. Jesus was born. And when Herod even tried to kill all the boys because he had the savior of the world has been born, Jesus was not killed. He lived miraculously. The God commanded, he visited again Joseph and told him on what to do to run to Egypt so that the baby will not be killed. And in one way or another, Jesus lived and he lived to save me and you because God had a plan for him. Praise the Lord. Another point, a result of visitation, judgment on the wicked. Praise the Lord. Visitation of God release judgment on the wicked. 
as seen in the story in, of, in Genesis of Sodom and Gomorrah. The sinful city, the city that they were doing evil, that there were no respect of their bodies. But God came and they were, they were burned with sulfur because of the sin that they were doing. The wicked will be judged. My sister, my brother, encourage yourself. Those who are thinking, those who are putting you down, rejoicing, thinking that they've won the battle, don't worry. Your hour of visitation will come and you will rise up. You will rise up, my sister. You will rise up, my brother. And they will be ashamed. And so, be encouraged. Prepare for your visitation. The judgment of the wicked will come. Hallelujah. And even as after we've seen the results of this visitation, I don't want you to miss this visitation. What do we do to ensure that we get this visitation? How do you provoke visitation? Yani it's how do you incite any action? What do you do to ensure that you don't miss this visitation by God? I can tell you, we read Joseph went into a sleep. I can imagine. And during that sleep, he was visited. For you, I cannot tell you sleep for you to be visited by the angel. Mm -mm. One thing I will encourage you, praise and worship God. Praise the Lord. Sing songs of praises. Acts chapter 16 verse 25. We see Paul and Silas. They were in prison. Not that because they were criminals. But because the, the world had seen Christ in them. Because of the good things they were doing to the believers. And their enemies were not happy. And that's why they took them to prison. Not knowing the God who was in them was greater than what these people were doing. And so in the prison, you know the story. Paul and Silas started praising God with hymns, prayers, and they prayed. What happened? There was a great earthquake that shook the foundation of the prison. And all the doors were open. And the, those who were chained, their bands were loosed. Praise the Lord. And so when you praise God in songs, in hymns, dance like David dance, praise God, you will be visited. God will come through for you. What you are trusting God, that is the hour of your breakthrough. As it happened for Silas and Paul, so it will happen for you, my believer. Let us praise the Lord in every season, be it at night, be it the day. And when you are happy, when you are sad, remember praising God. Praising God will shake that mountain that you are going through. And you will receive your, your breakthrough through the visitation that you will receive. Another point on how to provoke visitation, prayer and fasting. In the same book of Acts, we are told Paul and Silas enter into prayer. They prayed. They didn't go when they were in prison. They didn't cry. They didn't look for who do I know to set me free. They don't look for money to corrupt the prison wilderness. No, they enter into prayers. So whatever you are going through, don't be shaken. Pray. Don't think that the one who you know will help you. God in heaven already knows what you are going through and he will help you. Pray and fast. When you are given the opportunity to pray and fast in church, through corporate prayers, participate. You, are, you will not miss your hour of visitation. When you are told in the ministry you are in to pray and fast, pray and fast. You will not miss your visitation. Hallelujah. Another point that we see the person who prayed and fast, you know Esther, Queen Esther, what happened to him? He went into prayer and fasting and his city were not destroyed. His hometown were not destroyed. Daniel also went into prayer and fasting and he prayed. And even during that time that they threw him, they threw him into the den of lions. You know what happened? God saved him. He was not alone. Even Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know their story. They prayed and God answered their prayer. Another point on how to provoke visitation, work in holiness and purity. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18, the book of Matthew Chapter 5, verse 18, in the Beatitudes, the Bible tells us 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So, if you want to see God, be pure in heart. There is no shortcut. Be pure in heart, and you will see God. Walk in purity. Mary was a virgin. Mary was pure lady, as to Joseph also. And they were blessed to become the parents of our Savior. So walk in holiness and purity. You will be visited. You will receive your breakthrough, my sister, my brother. The last point, exercise a violent faith. Have faith on what you are praying for. Have faith in that that you are trusting God for. And you will not miss a breakthrough. You will receive a breakthrough. Have faith. The Bible encourages us. Yes, there are three levels of faith. There is the little faith. There is that little that we see in the book of Matthew. In the gospel when we are told even a little faith like a mustard seed move the mountains. Have faith, my sister. There is the full faith and there is no faith at all. I don't want to be you to be among those who have no faith and they call themselves believers. Have faith. First Kings 18.4, we see Elijah telling Ahab. Ahab was not happy that there was drought in the land. But Elijah, being the prophet of God, believed, had faith that rain was coming, even if there were no signs of rain. And he trusted God and prayed and released it to God. And he went ahead by faith, told Ahab, prepare, get up, eat, drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Here Elijah exercised a violent kind of faith. He believed that it will rain. In real, there was no sign of rainfall, but it rained. He sees through the eye of supernatural. He sees possibilities in the midst of impossibility. That is the faith I want you listener to have. See possibilities. Whatever issue you are going through, it is not yet the end. God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Your case is not done with you. Our God is able. He is our supernatural God. Every impossibility will be possible. When he visit you, the results will be there. You will be restored. You will receive salvation. There will be healing. There will be supernatural manifestation. And so my listener, I want to encourage you Victory is in you. Trust God that as he visits you, you will receive your breakthrough. As he hears the prayers of others, he will not pass you by. As he visits others, he will not pass you by. Believe God. This is your time of visitation. Let us pray, even as you be meditate on these words, that yes, I need to be visited. Maybe you are there. I don't know what you are going through. Close your eyes, let us believe together, and you will receive your breakthrough. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for the word that we've shared, oh, my Father. Thank you for encouraging us that, yes, Lord, when you visit us, evidence will be seen. This moment, my listener, Jehovah God, whatever issue is going through, all that is believing you for, this moment, my Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you may touch them, may you heal the sick, oh God. May you minister to your children, Jehovah. Let them not be discouraged and carry them, for you are our God. Jehovah, I pray that you may stretch your healing hand and pawn those who are sick. May you lift them, those who are low, oh God. May those who are trusting in you for financial breakthrough, may you provide ways for them. Silver and gold belongs to you, Jehovah. I pray, God, even those who are having God's issues, my God, you are our great judge. My Father, Father, I pray that, Lord, may they receive their breakthrough. You are our judge, oh God. And I pray, Jehovah, Lord, reach out to your own children. Visit them as you visited Joseph. And gave him an answer. And he carried and he was the father of Jesus. Visit your own, O oh God. That testimonies will be shared for the glory and honor of your name. I thank you and I lift your name. And I glorify your name. For there is no any other God but you alone. I thank you, Jesus. And I praise you. In the name of Jesus, I pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. God bless you, listener. Be encouraged. 
our God is able and he will do what he say he will do for his word is yes and amen his promises are yes and amen and so I end by asking you yes open your heart Jesus to come and dine with you your life will never be the same again remain blessed continue be encouraged and walk in righteousness in Jesus name shalom and shalom <music>